All right, we're back. <laughs> we're back. It's been a few days of test flying out here in the field, like after after other shoots and um, in the evenings and whatnot, so it keeps being too dark <laughs> to, to get uh, much footage. But I'm back as the sun's setting once again to fly this guy here, the Nanta Halo, which is my um, kind of custom-designed X8 heavy lifter FPV drone. And then over here we have the other heavy lifter in the fleet, the uh, Griffin X8. This is a, a custom build from the, the good guys over at BFD. So there she is, uh, the heavy lifter, which I normally carry like my full red uh, Moby and all, all that kind of stuff. But today it's just, uh, just out here doing some uh, testing and tuning on it. And then I'm going to put up the Nanta Hala and get some um, footage on the Z cam. So I'll give you a look through it. All right. It's so smooth. Very gentle. Very giant of this size. It doesn't feel like it needs any throttle at all. It's just gonna pop into the air. Even though it's got that camera up there. So this guy is running on 8S voltage. It's got two 4S packs, two 5100 4S packs in series. So it's not as much voltage as the uh, Beast Class build I've been using. But the trade-off is that it has a lot, it's twice as many blades. So the combined effect of that is that it feels you know, powerful and steady but not so jumpy. I think that makes it less fast and agile overall. But the trade-off being that it's smooth and kind of indifferent to the weight. Coming up on seven and a half minutes armed here. So if we're looking at eight minutes of flight time on an FPV quad with a cinema camera, eight minutes of flight time on something like this is pretty kick-ass. Uh, that's definitely more than a beast class drone, even without a camera, it can pull. Yeah, if you're like an all-around more capable drone and the fact that it's the weight and the smoothness and the redundancy and the battery life, I think the trade-off being that it's not the snappy little agile bird that its smaller siblings are. So it's not going to be the right fit for everything. But if you want to fly a camera, an SLR, a red Komodo, a Sigma FB, Canon, Canon R, all that kind of stuff. This is going to be a kick-ass choice, I think, for people who are okay with the eight blades. <laughs> all right, so that's my voltage alarm. I'm at nine minutes flight time right now. I'm going to put her down. have it. There you go. That's the uh 
two heavy lifters in the fleet going into 2020, the um, FPV heavy lifter with the cinema camera. Um, flies the Z-Cam like it's a GoPro. And um, hopefully a, you know, the red Komodo once that starts shipping, if that looks to be a good option for this kind of filming. And then of course the, the mighty um, BFD, the Griffin over there. Between those two, I think we can fly about any any camera up to the Alexa Mini, and uh, looking forward to a lot of great projects this year. And it's a it's an exciting time to be in cinematography in general, but you know, in the aerial field especially, because the technology is so good now. There's such a wide range of tools and applications, and uh, you know, people have kind of warmed up to the technology. You know, on set and on projects, we're not so much like back in the uh, homegrown days trying to make the case for, you know, remote control helicopters and cameras. It's kind of a given now that close range aerial filming and high speed aerial filming, um, but there's this, this role that this kind of technology can really play in our industry. So I've been at it for a long time and I'm really excited with where we are <laughs> now as an industry. So uh, shout out to Stefan at Stand In Quads, to uh, Max and team over at BFD, um, and all the folks who've, who've been helpful along the way. So here's to a good 2020, y'all. Hi, right. signing off.